My name is Sister Joan Brown, uh, J-O-A-N-B-R-O-W-N, and um, I live in Albuquerque. I'm the Executive Director of New Mexico Interfaith Power and Light, and I'm a Franciscan sister. And um, I'm very happy to be here in this part of our state, in this desert place, which is quite beautiful, actually. And I come from a, a long tradition, in Christian tradition, of people going to the desert, not because it was a throwaway place, or a place where nobody lived, or was not important, but because that is where people find God, and that is where we find our souls, and we need our souls and ourselves in a very deep place. So those of you coming from back east, I welcome you these days to uncover that and discover that here as well, as well as our friends from Holtec who do not live here in this state as well. So um, as a Franciscan sister in my Catholic tradition, um, there are several things that are really important. One is that we are brothers and sisters to everyone and everything, every element. Again, there is no out there there is nothing that is a waste. There is nothing that is to be thrown away or discriminated against. We're also called to use primacy of conscience, which means to follow the law of God inscribed in our hearts. And that that is a moral law and a law that is high, that we need to choose to do what is right. Also within my tradition, there are some environmental justice principles that we hold that I think are important for the NRC to understand human life and dignity, that every human life is important. It doesn't matter if you live in an urban area or if you live in a rural area. A life is a life and none are dispensable. We need to be concerned about the safety and health of all lives. And in this state, we have a history of that not being respected. We have many people dying of cancer who are downwinders, who are suffering from uranium mining, and we are very skeptical because we do not want to see this continued, and that is why we are concerned with this new proposed Holtec project. We're called to be stewards of creation. That means to be caretakers, like your gardens at home. How many of us would put nuclear waste into my garden, which I just planted my tomato plants in? I do not think so. It is holy ground. We have an obligation to future generations for beyond, I can even imagine. In terms of religious traditions, 250,000 years that we're dealing with with this nuclear waste is um, eternity. It's an eternity. There is a concept of spirit of su subsidiarity, which really addresses environmental justice. And this project is proposed in one of the poor areas of the state, uh, a predominantly Hispanic-speaking area and very low-income area, as if people here are not intelligent, do not have a voice, and cannot um, say, yes, we want something, or no, we don't. It speaks of, again, human life, and it is not just for economic gain for a few uh, individuals or a few com uh, companies. Sister, can I have you sum up now? Okay. So these are a few of the concerns. I do have some suggestions, and I'll make those very brief, that um, the storage site for this uh, needs to stay where it is at the nuclear power plants where it is already stored. Second, we need a longer comment period and in other locations in the state because this uh, will be transported throughout the state and affect many of us. And finally, that we need to have all the information, adequate resources, including um, financial verifications and analysis. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sister Marlene. Sister Marlene. Perot. She's, okay. Uh, how about Carol Merrill? Here's Carol, do you want to use this microphone up here? Sure. Thank you.
think you can expedite this so we can all get to the meeting? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Chip, would you expedite this so we can all get to speak? I mean, maybe have people. You're all going to get to speak. Well, and we're trying to expedite it as much as possible. And this has taken time too, you know. So thank you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. My name is Carol Merrill, a retired librarian and teacher from Albuquerque. I'm a published author and have been a member of CARD, Citizens for Alternatives to Radioactive Deposit dumping for 30 years. I wish you were having public meetings in Santa Fe and Albuquerque mm -hmm. so that more citizens could voice concerns in person. Two of my friends live in Cerritos, New Mexico, one block from a railroad. They want to say to you, leave the high-level waste where it is. Another of my friends owns a newspaper north of Albuquerque in the village of Corrales, the Corrales Comment where I work as a freelance reporter. He is unable to be here because it's deadline day. He wants to say, this is important. Back in the 70s and 80s, New Mexican citizens were repeatedly reassured that locating the waste isolation pilot project, WIP, would not lead to the deposit of high level waste in New Mexico. This current proposal is an unconscionable breach of those promises never to allow this to happen. This is inexcusable. For my concerns, personally, there is no way to justify hauling high-level nuclear waste across thousands of miles of aging train tracks, endangering countless communities. The canisters that Holtec is trying to get the government to pay for are defective. For one, they are not able to withstand the high temperatures of southern New Mexico. An engineer who studied whole tech specifications for their proposed canisters told me this. Is this correct? I need to know that. I want it on paper, one way or the other. The temperature around southern New Mexico sometimes reaches 120 degrees, and their canisters are not effective at that high temperature. The canisters will be 12 inches up out of the ground. Perhaps this project was not well planned. The spent fuel rods are from power plants mostly on the East Coast. We do not even receive benefit from the electricity that was generated. If the nuclear waste is so safe for us here, why don't the people around the nuclear plants keep it there? Amen. The best solution is to leave high level waste near where it was generated. It is important to have effective sealed storage on site where it is now without exposing millions of people along railroads to deadly high-level waste and ineffective canisters. <coughs> One additional concern, if there would be a serious example, for example, a derailment in a heavily populated urban area with a breach of the seal on the canister necessitating a mass evacuation, with an area becoming uninhabitable for a long, <coughs> long time, think Chernobyl, and could you, and could you sound up for us, Karen, please? Who would be liable? I'm almost done. Is Holtec willing to be responsible should an accident occur? Do they have good insurance? If they are not liable, if they go bankrupt, how can we as citizens expect them to invest in an effective canister? I have three more sentences. They require an act of Congress. They require an act of Congress to proceed. What they're doing now is illegal. That is out of the question. Time to reconsider. This proposition is unacceptable. One more sentence. For our energy concerns in this great nation, it is time to employ natural genius to find more elegant, safe generators using wind, sun, water, tide, solar, geothermal for starters. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Thank you Carol. The recommendation of the gentleman in the back. I'm going to call a few, few names so that you know you're coming up. And we have three people here from Inter Interfaith Power and Light from Albuquerque who signed up. They didn't give a last name. One of them did, but Tom, Stephen, 
and Judy Smith. And then we have a group of five coming up. And is this Tom? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Tom Gorman, and I live in Santa Fe County, and I came down here tonight just because I felt very strongly about this project. Um, I have a background in emergency management. I was an emergency manager for a number of years in Colorado Springs, and then when I moved to New Mexico in 1992, I worked at the State Office of Emergency Management for 14 years doing emergency planning. And everything I can see about this project tells me it's not properly planned. Uh, I agree with the gentleman that brought up the idea of interim storage. Interim is an interesting concept for something that might last 120 years. Um, in emergency planning, we, we didn't think along those terms. We always had a, if we were doing an, uh, an interim plan, we had a permanent plan in mind that we started working on. That isn't happening right now. So I'm very much opposed to this, and I just, I don't want to go over the same comments others have made, but uh, I'm very concerned on all of the risk that are expected to be handled by the people of New Mexico, along the rail routes, around the communities, near the site. And so for that reason, I'm very much opposed to this. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Gorman. And, uh, Stephen from Interfaith Power and Light is here, and then Judy Smith. Good evening. Uh, my name is Stephen Pika, and I am from Albuquerque as well. We were greeted earlier this afternoon by the mayor, who um, was unable to then stay on because he said family is first. I make my passage here this evening because my family is first too. And that family is not just my immediate family, but my New Mexican family, and my creation family. This is an old place. People have inhabited this land for many, many years, longer than where people who have helped create this nuclear waste come from. And that cannot be forgotten. And it made me grateful to hear that you said that there would be conversations with the elders here because it is important in New Mexico that we speak to our elders. That has been lost in many places, but that is not lost here in New Mexico. And the due diligence calls us not as people of privilege to come in and do what we think is best, but as you have said, to listen and to listen closely and to listen carefully to the people who can tell us what 120 years means to them. In the native tradition, they speak of seven generations. We make decisions based upon seven generations, which interesting enough is kind of your 120 year model. And so I appeal to each of you to draw from a deep place of your own wisdom. I come forth as well remembering my father who died less than a year ago and he said sometimes that in your gut, when you know something just doesn't sound right, you got to believe it. And this is one of those where in my gut, and I think in many people's guts, this just isn't right. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we, Judy Smith is coming up, but we're going to go next to a group of five, Randy Prude, Jim Carlisle, Cody Rogers, and Steve Schaefersman. Go ahead. Welcome. This is Judy Smith. So, hello everyone. My name is Judy Smith. I too am also uh, living in Albuquerque. I've been in New Mexico since 1979 and I love New Mexico with all my heart. And when I heard about this project, I thought about not only the 120 years of the temporary storage, because time uh, matters. And it made me think back to the time when my congregation, I belong to Congregation Albert, which is a Jewish reform congregation that was established in New Mexico 
a little bit more than 120 years ago. And so um, we've incorporated the wisdom of the state into our own traditions, and it made me think more and more about the passage of time, and that what's temporary to some uh, may not be the long view that we need to take. Uh, for example, um, my religion, according to our scripture in the uh, Old Testament, uh, we received the wisdom of God from Mount Sinai 5,778 years ago, and that tradition was discovered in the desert, so I take that as symbolic. But uh, I wanted to mention Genesis uh, um, 2, uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 15, which says um, that not only will we as humans rule over the earth, but we are called on to tend it and keep it. And those thoughts have guided us for these 5,778 years. And sometimes we've been successful and sometimes not. In this case, I think we need to take a long view in order to be sure that we're successful. And I call success keeping being uh, actions that keep in mind justice, justice for the people of our state, for all of us who live in this beloved enchanted land, justice for the state itself and for the land, and justice for the next generations in years to come. And we need to think about the impact of these decisions on the next generations. I'm asking for some actions that have already been mentioned, including time for comments and accessible uh, locations for people across the state. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Ain't going nowhere. Baby.